The media has just reported that Tesla's EV share is higher than they thought it would be this year. It's being boosted by Tesla's price cuts. I'm really curious to know though why these claims are being made because it doesn't really make sense. Ford has cut the price of the Mustang Mach-E. Volkswagen has cut the price of the ID4. Hyundai has cut the price of the Ionic 5. No mention of those price cuts, only of Tesla's. Now here are the numbers behind Tesla and EV sales in the US so far this year. Hello, my friends. Great to see you. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. But first, an important public service announcement that you all need to know. If you're not already flying into Melbourne, you should be. No, seriously, I would love to see you on the 23rd of September, which is a Saturday at 1 p.m. at the Electric Vehicle Show in Melbourne. I'll put a link in the description. And if you'd like a free ticket, if you haven't already bought one yet, send me an email, contact at theelectricviking.com. US EV share is being driven apparently by Tesla price cuts, nothing else. Registration data shows. New US registrations rose 50% for Tesla in the January to July period, giving it a 60% or 59.6% market share in the electric vehicle market. Among all brands, EV registrations rose 67% over the last year to 655,986. What is a little, just a little bit alarming about this is that there were more EVs sold in the month of August in China than what there was sold for the first, yeah, first seven months of the year in the United States. Now, hopefully that begins to change. But it is worth keeping in mind the fact that there are so many cheap EVs. If you guys had the choices that the Chinese have in terms of EVs, whether that's even pickup trucks, very, very affordable, so many different choices to make. And we just don't yet outside of China, but it will happen. Battery prices just came down another 10% in the month of July alone. Anyway, US market share for electric vehicles rose to 7.2% in the January to July period. According to new vehicle registration data from Experian, with Tesla spurring demand with escalating price cuts through the year. Now, I don't think it's fair to say that. That's what Automotive News said that. I just think, yeah, they've spurred demand, no question about it. But to say that Tesla is solely responsible for spurring demand because it's reducing the price just discounts everyone else that's doing exactly the same thing. It's just kind of this anti-bias against Tesla. I, I think honest, objective reporting is what we need to hear, not this kind of like, click on this because we're going to bash on Tesla because they just reduced their prices. That's the only reason they're selling cars. Margins are going through the floor. They're terrible now. you know. And then the next day, I'll have a really positive article about Tesla. The next one will be a negative, just trying to create this bizarre roller coaster ride of emotions. I, I don't really like that kind of reporting. Anyhow, the truth is new US EV registrations rose 655,986 in the seven month period, which is a great result. That's a 67% increase over the previous period when EV share was 4.9%. Total new light vehicle registrations for the seven months were 9.1 million. Tesla sold 391,000 vehicles from January to July in the US that's a 50% increase compared with a year earlier, giving them nearly, well, basically a 60% market share. Of course, I'm sure you'll see the articles. Seeking Alpha will be saying, Tesla's lost market share. The roof is falling in, we told you, stock price is gonna plummet. Now, right now there is actually evidence that Tesla is the most shorted stock in the world right now, and has been for the last three months, which is mind blowing to me. When will these idiots not learn their lesson. I mean, think about this. Tesla is being shorted more than VinFast. VinFast, my goodness. If you wanted to make some money, VinFast was the perfect opportunity. So if you're shorting Tesla instead of VinFast, then you're an utter Muppet. Anyway, in July alone, Tesla sold nearly 61,000 vehicles, apparently more than every other manufacturer combined, which sold 48,566 in the month. So that's impressive. In fact, that means Tesla is maintaining its market share. New Model 3, that may help to boost market share for Tesla. 
Still, Tesla's EV rivals such as BMW, Mercedes-Benz and Rivian are doing really well. Great to see these guys start to sell more EVs and start to realize what's really going on. BMW, they're saying some weird things about hydrogen lately, but either way, it doesn't matter. EV sales for those companies are increasing and I think they're starting to go, you know what, we're waking up, we're smelling the roses, let's make more EVs. I think that's fantastic. Ford, Hyundai and Kia also saw registrations rise, although their market share fell, all of them, all three of them. Tesla, market share, 59.5% for 390,400 deliveries. Second place, Chevrolet with 6% market share and 39,647 deliveries. Third place was Ford with 33,955 deliveries and 5.2% market share. Hyundai was in fourth, or Hyundai, I think you guys call it over there. In the US, 28,200 deliveries for 4.3% market share. Next was BMW. 23,116 sales, 3.5% market share, followed by Mercedes-Benz. 21,160 deliveries, 3.2% market share. Volkswagen was next. 20,000 deliveries, almost all the ID4, which is a actually a really well-priced car in the US. 3% market share for Volkswagen. Next, Rivian, R1T, beautiful car. If you bought one of those, I certainly do envy you. We don't get those in the, in Australia, though Rivian did say they're gonna bring them to Australia at some point in time. Rivian, 18,360 deliveries for 2.8% market share, followed by Kia, 17,000, 2.6%, Audi, 12,000, 1.9%, Nissan, 10,000, and 1.6%. Then we got the two Chinese companies, Volvo and Polestar, followed by Toyota with a surprising 4,342 sales and 0.7%. Now let's have a look how the Japanese are going here. So we've got Nissan, 1.6%. We've got Toyota, 0.7%. Subaru, 0.6%. I'm surprised they even had 0.6%. Then of course, all the way down in 25th place was Mazda with exactly 0% and 91 deliveries. But Mazda, by the way, I believe, have stopped selling the MX-30 pretty much everywhere. That car's been axed, along with Mazda the brand. Just letting you know that in case you're buying a Mazda, that, um, you know, whoever owns that company in a few years' time, hopefully they still continue to supply you with the parts that you need for your EVs. But who knows what they'll decide to do? They could do anything. Anyway, just a warning, if you've got to buy a Mazda, Good chance that's gonna happen before 2030 or before 2028 even. We're talking a company that sells only a million cars a year. Pretty much none of them are electric. What do you think is gonna to happen to that company? Yeah. Here's what JD Power said. It estimated electric vehicle share at 8.5% in the US in July. In other words, EV market share has grown in spite of the media in the US going against EVs big time in the last few weeks. Tesla price cuts have significantly improved affordability compared with combustion vehicles this year, said JD Power, which rates electric vehicles on a 100 point scale compared with gasoline. They said affordability remains the highest scoring factor at 97, driven by aggressive pricing from Tesla, said Elizabeth Creer, Vice President of Electric Vehicle Practice at JD Power. Although the affordability factor is approaching parity, it is skewed by the premium market, driven largely by Tesla's 63% EV market share. So JD Power is saying Tesla has 63% market share. Uh, Experian and others are saying it's around 60. Who knows? It's around that number somewhere. Mainstream segments such as EV pickups and compact crossovers, the affordability score is 80 out of 100, said JD Power. And in the mid-sized crossover segment, there were no mainstream EV models in July although Kia's three-row EV9 will go on sale this year. What does JD Power have to say, though, about the future of EVs? They say that adoption will rise. JD Power expects market share to end the year at 9% in the United States. In other words, nearly one in every 10 cars sold in the US by the end of this year will be fully electric. Tesla Model Y sales, of course, are basically driving the EV market in the US. 236,000 Model Ys were delivered so far, well, not so far this year, but in the first seven months. And that means Tesla sold more than twice as many Model Ys this year versus last year. 
However, the Model 3 also had some really good numbers too. The Model 3 saw a 21% rise in new registrations from January to July with 131,381 deliveries. The freshened up new version of the Model 3 will be on sale within a couple of months in the US. Registrations for the Model S sedan fell 51% and the Model X sales dropped 14%. But now we've seen some enormous price cuts for all versions of the Model X and the Model S. I'm expecting a bit of a boost to Model X and Model S sales as a result. Chevrolet number two, what were the cars that did well for them? Number two, with 39,647 deliveries, the Bolt EUV was responsible for most of those sales. Now, apparently, according to Automotive News, 25 new Silverado EV pickups were delivered. I don't know if they've got these numbers right. I'm going to guess they're saying 25 Hummers. Anyhow, they believe the Bolt EUV and the Bolt EV were responsible for almost all of Chevy's sales in this first seven months of the year. Ford with 34,000 deliveries. Those deliveries were made up mostly of the Mustang Mach-E, the F-150 Lightning, and the E-Transit 350 commercial van. Mach-E registrations though did drop by 18% in spite of the fact that Ford did reduce the prices pretty significantly. However, F-150 Lightning sales increased to nearly 12,000. This means that the Lightning is now outselling the Rivian R1T. Hyundai, fourth, 28,200 registrations, 61% increase year over year. This gives it 4.3% market share. But Hyundai's EV share fell from 4.4% in the January to July period last year. So their market share has just slightly decreased 4.4% down to 4.3%. BMW is fifth, 23,000 registrations, 3.5% market share, which is a huge increase because last year it had only 0.8% market share. That's a dramatic change. Now, if we combine the Hyundai group together, Hyundai and Kia, put them under the same hat. They kind of are, they kind of are, they kind of aren't. It's a bit of a complex structure, but I mean, generally we do put them together. So let's say we put them together. That means Hyundai Motor Group was in second place in the United States with 48,373 deliveries, 7.4% of the segment. And that puts General Motors down to third place with 6.7. What are your thoughts on this? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.